Hey, what's up? What's that? You want better legato technique? Well, you've come to the right place. Join me as we take five simple steps to better legato technique. Step number one, thumb positioning. Ideally, you wanna reassess your thumb positioning just to check that you're not doing anything that's causing any undue excess tension in your left hand. So we want a nice balanced position for the left hand and a position that gives each finger equal independence so that you're not forcing one finger to work a little bit harder than the others. So ideally, we wanna position our thumb centrally on the back of the neck. And our hand should be in this position. Um, to start with, you know, you can alter this according to how it feels to you. You know, I'm not saying here that this is the only way of doing it. There's lots of different ways of doing it, but this is what really helped my technique. So thumb behind either the first or second fingers. If you just put your hand in this position uh, with the thumb, I'm placing it opposite the second finger here. It's quite a natural position for the left hand. Just literally squeeze lightly as though you were squeezing something nice and soft. <laughs> and then place our hand on the fretboard like so. That's a really comfortable position for me to play. The other thing you'll notice in this position, the knuckles of the left hand are pretty much parallel. And that's a really good thing, because again, it's gonna help with balance and uh, you know, you're know you not gonna put any undue stress on any of the individual fingers. They're all gonna be exerting the same kind of amount of energy um, whenever you play. So that's really important here to get a nice balanced legato technique. Next step, muting technique. Now, if you're using gain, as I do quite a lot, you're gonna want to develop a nice muting technique. In fact, even if you're playing clean, it's important to control any extraneous sounds. We don't want any of those sounds coming in, so we want to develop a really nice, clean muting technique. The way that I develop my muting technique is quite a logical one. Basically, we've got the roll of the right hand and the roll of the left hand in muting technique. Let's start just with the index finger here, fret five of the E string. The roll of the right hand is to mute any strings north of the index finger. So any strings above the index finger. Obviously on the E string we haven't got that. So I position usually the, the first finger or whichever finger I'm using so that all the adjacent strings are muted with that first finger. If I hit all six, only that first finger comes out, okay? Now, when we move to the A string, we do the same thing. First finger, mute all the others. And I actually position the first finger so that it touches the, the lower string. So again, I'm hitting all six, only one note coming out. However, this is where the right hand moves in. I'll, I'll actually lightly touch with the palm of the hand the upper string in addition to the first finger muting so there's no chance of any of the strings ringing off and that stays the same for every single string so move to the D it's exactly the same A string muted G B and E muted and the bottom E string as well as the A partially is muted by the right hand again absolutely nothing apart from the D string and we do the same with the G the B and the top E. So that is muting technique. When it comes to legato, you want to make sure your technique is clean as possible. So whenever you play, you need to be employing quality muting technique to keep things nice and clean. <music> 
Right, we're on to the next step now, which is controlling tension. This is essential if you want to develop a nice, solid legato technique. You've got to be able to control the tension, not the other way around. It happens a lot with players that when they play legato, they run out of steam really, really quickly and they can't sustain long legato lines. So you need to be in control of the te tension, not the tension controlling you, so to speak. So one way that I practice that is try and find the sweet spot. What I mean by a sweet spot is a, a light movement with the left hand finding the optimum position on the fretboard so that you get a nice resonant note a good true note so I will start really really slowly because it enables me to really control how much tension I'm applying so I like to keep things nice and light the other thing I like to do is try and keep my fingers close to the fretboard obviously we need to have enough sort of momentum with the fingers when we hammer on them and so on to, to make a good sounding note. But we don't want to be, you know, flailing about here with the left hand. We, not, we need to be in control. The other thing is make sure your fingers play directly behind the fret, because that's going to give you the sweet spot. Okay, so again, it's all about controlling the tension when you play. You must be in control of the tension rather than the tension controlling you. Now we're going to talk about one of the most important aspects of legato technique practice. For me, that is anyway. And that is hammers from nowhere. It's basically playing with the left hand. So the left hand creates the notes. The right hand doesn't. Uh, so no use of a pick whatsoever with this kind of practice. So hammers from nowhere. That, I think that phrase was coined by Greg Howe, if I'm uh, not much mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. Basically, it means that we give the left hand a nice, solid workout because it involves a lot of control when you're doing left hand hammers only. If you come from a rock background, which is the standard legato technique, is picking the first note on every new string, very much kind of like a Satriani technique, uh, this will be pretty challenging to you if you haven't done it before. What I like to do is I like to keep things simple as always. Uh, start with an A major scale, three note per string. You don't have to do three note per string, but you know we're going to do it now. But what we're going to do is instead of picking the first note, we're going to hammer it on with the index finger. So we end up playing this. Okay, first thing, do you notice how clean it was? The muting technique is being used properly here. When you use gain with left hand hammers only, you'll find that if you're not used to the technique, it will take quite a bit of work to get everything under control. But maintain the steps that we've talked about as you're playing the scales and practicing the patterns or whatever it is that you're doing with left hand hammers only, and it should fall into place over time. You can apply this to any scales and any patterns that you want, but make sure you don't involve the right hand, the picking hand that is, it's just left hand. Again, make sure you control the tension when you play. If you're not used to this, that tension will start to, to creep in, especially if you try and run before you can walk. So keep the scale scales nice and steady, nice and controlled, so everything is working as it should, then you can start pushing the speed. Essential thing with this is controlling the tension and keep everything nice and clean. So go for a nice clean technique here. Now we're on to the last step and that is building speed. How I like to build speed with legato technique. The common sense approach is literally play faster, which does work. Obviously when you take the speed up when you're practicing whatever it is, 
When you're building speed, you've got to make sure the technique doesn't fall apart. So all of the elements that we've talked about so far, muting technique, uh, left hand positioning, thumb positioning, and controlling tension, all of those have got to be in place when you push the speed. So as soon as it starts to fall apart, you know then you've got to pull it back. So that's a classic way of building speed, and it works, it really does work. One thing that I like to practice a lot is dotted rhythms with just left hand hammers only, because it really highlights the control um, you have over your timing and it takes a certain kind of control as well so players tend not to practice these kind of things especially rock players so I'm talking about doing this kind of thing so A major Okay, so I'm just doing a basic dotted rhythm there, but it's a lot more challenging than it seems at first glance. So give it a try. You've got to keep all of those things under control. Got to keep it nice and clean. Make sure there's no excess, excess tension creeping in there. The advantage of this is that you're doing sort of small speed bursts here with just pairs of fingers. And the good thing is you're doing speed bursts on, it, sometimes it's a single string, sometimes it's crossing strings. And especially when you're involving the use of the index finger hammering on from nowhere, it's gonna give you a real challenging workout for the left hand. Even though, you know, building strength with the left hand is important, this is all about controlling tension. So you're not using brute force to play everything. You know, you're using a nice light touch, but you're getting great results with it. So you can invert the, the dotted rhythm. So like that. You can do whatever you want with those dotted rhythms, but it's, it's a great way of building speed. And obviously you want to build speed with the whole pattern itself. So take that tempo up uh, as and when you feel ready. So just to conclude, we've got five simple steps to a better legato technique. Number one, thumb positioning and general left hand positioning. Number two, muting technique. Number three, controlling tension. Number four, left hand hammers only. Number five, building speed with dotted rhythms. Okay, uh, by no means is this the only way of doing it. These are the essential things that have really helped me develop my legato technique. And some of you guys out there may be wondering, where's all the lick examples? Where's all the long legato lines that I wanna practice? Well, that kind of defeats the purpose of this whole video. You know, I wanted to talk to you about the things that I felt were the most effective. And these are elements that really I feel should be in place before you start approaching these monster licks. Because you could end up developing really, really bad habits and not getting the best out of your uh, legato playing. You know, if all I do here is say, play this lick, you know, that doesn't show you anything. I want to show you the nuts and bolts of the technique that I use so that it can really, really help you develop your own legato technique. Okay, hope you enjoyed. Peace.